Yo, 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 Randall getting the house ready to get his recitation on. What's up, Salmon? You're here early. You're late. I'm here 10 minutes early. According to the TA committee, if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. I behoove you to take your drugs a little more seriously, Randy. Well, how's this? Our recitation section got the highest quiz percentage score. I heard. So then what's with the attitude? High five! some code tracing. Uh, so code tracing is really important in understanding like what your code is doing and like what we're learning in class at that time and most importantly debugging your code. Uh, it's super un helpful to understand what your code is doing while you're writing it. So let's just go through an example right now. Um, so here's our first code tracing. Um, so it, it um, puts in an integer and then it returns our count. Okay, so our value, our first value is five. So we're gonna run through the statements. If five is equal to zero, five is not equal to zero, so we're just gonna pass over that statement. Then we're gonna have five is equal to absolute value of five. Well, that's great, five was already positive. Um, and then we're defining our count as zero. So now we're gonna go into this while loop. While five is greater than zero, we're going to add one to our count and then integer divide by 10. So when we integer divide five by 10, that's gonna return zero, and our count's gonna be added to one. And so then when we run through this whole thing, again, the while loop is gonna be out because n is now not greater than zero, and then we're just gonna return our count, which is one. So ct5 should just return one. So now we're going to do our next one, which is 42. Okay, so 42 goes up there. So 42 is not equal to zero, so we're just going to pass over that statement. Then 42 is equal to absolute value of 42, so that's great. Uh, the count is zero, and while um, since 42 is greater than zero, we're going to go into this statement, and we're going to add one to our count and integer divide 42 by 10. So integer divide 42 by 10 is four. So then we're gonna go back up to the while loop and then we're gonna add another one to our count. So our count is now two. And we're gonna integer divide four by 10. So that's zero. So then we're gonna go back to our while loop. Now zero is not greater than zero. So we're just gonna go down to the bottom and return our count. So our count here is two. And that's really basically how you do code tracing, guys. Okay, so we're gonna do another example and you guys will be answering questions as I go through it. So, here we have C2 of S. Here is our S for this particular problem. It is the string of four. So as we go through, we will replace S with the string of four. So let's begin. First, does anybody have any idea based on what they're seeing here, what the code might print? Seven. No. Fifteen five? No, that's wrong. It's just, it's just wrong. <sighs> Let me go through it and we'll see if you catch on. So, We'll replace s here with the string of four. So while int of four, since this is a string, it'll just convert to four, is less than 100. Yes. It'll go into the conditional if the length of s mod two equals one. I don't get any of this, like none of it. Are they even speaking English? So here's selection sort, guys.
So guys, as you just saw, selection sort takes the largest value, copies it, and then puts it at the back of the list. So let's run through an example. Let's say we have a list of numbers, four, three, nine, and seven. Okay, so we take our list and we go through element by element. So four is now the largest value that we have. So then four is greater than three, but then four is not greater than nine. So nine is now our largest value. And then we go to the next element and nine is greater than seven. So, okay, so since nine is our largest element, we're gonna put that last. So we got four, three, we're swapping seven and nine. And there we go. So then let's run it again. So four is our largest element. And then it's larger than three. So it's still gonna be four. And then it's less than seven. So seven is our largest element, and it's the last one, so we can just leave it where it is. So the next one is just going to be four, three, seven, nine. Okay, so let's run through it again. So four is our largest element, and it's greater than three. And then we have no other elements to go through, so this is going to be our final code. So here we go. So that's selection sort. And now let's take a look at merge sort. So let's do a numerical example of merge sort. We're going to start with eight numbers. Let's do six, three, eight, four, nine, eleven, two, and seven. So with merge sort, it starts out breaking the entire list into groups of two. So we're gonna have six and three, eight and four, nine and 11, and two and seven. Now within these groups, it sorts them. So for this part, three is less than six, so they will swap. So it ends up being three, six. So we move on to the next pairing. Four is less than eight, so they will also swap. So it ends up being four, Eight. We're moving to the next group. Nine is less than 11, so it stays in this order. And in this group, seven is less than two. Shit. That's technical term. Two <laughs> is less than seven, so it will also stay in this order. So by merge sort, the groups double and they merge two of the groups together to make groups of four. So these two groups will be a group and these two will be a group. And you sort these in this group. So this one will end up being three, four, six, and eight. And then you sort this part. This ends up being two, seven, nine, and 11. Now finally, since there are only two groups left, they merge into one big group and you sort the entire list of numbers. So the final product will be two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and 11. And that's how you do merge sort.